Hi there, Northumberland. I'm Jan Sprague, and you're listening to The Jan Sprague Show here on Northumberland 89.7. Thanks for joining me for what promises to be a bit of a magical mystery tour, a behind-the-scenes look at the life and work of one of Canada's most acclaimed music, television, and commercial director-producers, a man who's filmed over 400 commercials and, in fact, won the first two Junos ever awarded for music video, and was the first person inducted into the Much Music Hall of Fame. During the 1980s, Rob Courtley produced numerous Juno Award-winning music videos for artists including Corey Hart, Gowan, Platinum Blonde, and Rush. More recently, Rob created the Interesting Is Everywhere website, which features short videos into the lives of interesting everyday people. Rob will be one of several celebrated presenters at Greenwood Coalition's second annual Imaginate, which takes place February 14th in Port Hope. Thanks for joining us in our Northumberland 89.7 studios today, Rob. Your body of work has certainly helped to shape the images so many of us remember on the screen in those early days of video. Music videos, commercials, television. What was that ride like through all of those decades? Can you tell us a little bit about that time? Uh, Sure. I mean, it was, um, I guess um, I started making music video uh, before much music. So if anyone remembers uh, the new music with uh, J.D. Roberts, who I think is a big Fox anchor star now, and uh, Jeannie Becker. Um, And... um, they were playing some music videos, but uh, the main reason for making a music video was really to promote the the artist abroad for a way of of uh, um, seeing what a band was like. Um, I mean, music video in some ways has been around forever, even going back to UB Blake in the 40s and 50s and the visualization of music. But um, the fun part was uh, that the record industry saw this as a way of promoting artists, um, uh, and uh, there weren't any rules. It was um, a wide open interpretation of what the music looked like. So uh, that's the way I thought about it initially, is that I'm listening to uh, an artist's song, and uh, what does it look like? Mm. That must have been fun. Was there a lot of collaboration with the artists at that time, or did you come in as a producer, director, and... Sort of just completely uh, uh, depended on the artist. Um, Larry Gowan um, was uh, very, very collaborative. Uh, so uh, um, Criminal Mind was the first piece that we did together. Um, and um, uh, we worked very closely on that. Well, because it was uh, animation and live action, there was uh, a lot of storyboarding involved. So it had a lot of pre-production. Every artist is different. Some uh, want to uh, be more involved and other people are... Uh, well, I, you know, I, some, I, I was very fortunate. Um, I, I was lucky to work with a lot of very interesting filmmakers at the time and artists. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think I did 15 videos with Corey. So uh, it evolved. We worked together closer and closer as time went on. That would evolve. And I, I imagine it was a fairly small group, sort of the group of people that were putting together these videos at that time in the industry. So you know, did you work sort of as a team, or not as a team, but, you know, in, in sort of uh, together in that way too, in the development of videos? I mean, you really didn't know what you were getting in, what was going to explode, you know, how it explode. What was it like when it did start to really explode? Uh, it was, it was uh, neat. I, I um, uh, there's a, a group called Platinum Blonde who um, I remember when we were first, uh, the first video that we did for them. I, I, I'm saying we because uh, filmmaking really is a team sport. There are other people involved in doing it. And uh, um, I remember doing the first wardrobe session with Platinum Blonde. And we tied, sort of randomly tied uh, bandanas around. Mark's leg for some reason. I don't know what it was. And I think about maybe two weeks after the video was released, I remember seeing some uh, kids walking down Young Street with <laughs> platinum blonde t-shirts and red bandanas uh, tied around uh, you know, the right leg. And I was like, oh my goodness. Um, there are a lot of people watching and paying attention to a lot of different parts of uh, what was then a new, uh, a new thing. A new. Oh gosh, I didn't know you were responsible for that. You and your team are responsible. I remember those bandanas. I remember that. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And and as it 
as things developed and you went through this phase and, and your different work, uh, w- what became clear to you about about the industry, about music, about directing, producing your work? Wow. Um, that's a big question. I, I, I mean, clear to me in terms of... Uh, I, I've, I've, always, I've always loved uh, filmmaking, I'm, uh, all disciplines of filmmaking, and I've always loved uh, music. So uh, I guess what became clear to me is the, that as a tool, there was so much that could be done with the combination. Um, and, and not only, I mean, music uh, video is uh, uh, inter- pure entertainment, really, um, uh, but th- then it uh, took me into other forms of filmmaking, which um, I respect the power of, of uh, music and audio as much as the film as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, interesting that, that mix, that bringing that mix together. It's still still with me. I've uh, actually just uh, started to do a couple of things in the music business again. Uh, there's a fa- fabulous harmonica player in uh, uh, Port Hope named uh, Carlos Del Unco, who, if you haven't heard him, you must. He's uh, uh, an amazing talent. So I just did a little piece with him, which is great. And uh, another young artist coming out of uh, the East Coast. Um, named uh, Julia is just about to be released um, uh, Universal I believe uh, so uh, uh, it's fun it's you know and if you're having fun it it works it's great so it does work and Carlos is uh, you're right he's a not to be missed oh harmonic hug player something that uh, and he'll be playing actually not uh, too long from now in March again I think he's appearing in, in Coburg so I urge people to to keep their eyes open for those tickets because they'll sell fast yes They'll sell fast. I think you'll be with Jimmy Boskell, I think, this um, time. There's another amazing talent. Yeah, there's another amazing talent. That's right. We have so much talent here in Northumberland and and in Canada. What do you think about, you know, how about the Canadian element of your work? Uh, and, uh, and getting, once again, like you said, originally music videos were to spread the word about, about a talent internationally. So how do you think music videos have, have done that for, um, you know, for Canadians? That's interesting. I, you know, um, I, I guess you can easily just list names of international music stars that come from Canada. I, for some reason, there seems to be a lot of women that have, have just done so well, which is which is fantastic. I, I, um, Canada has a really fabulous uh, music uh, talent base. I don't know whether or not it's the cold nights that make people practice more or whatever, but I, I certainly have met a lot of phenomenal uh, musicians and artists and filmmakers as well. Um, I mean, music video, I think then it was when I started doing it in the 80s was so experimental. I mean, we were learning what to do. I think now, um, although much isn't anymore, much music is gone now, right? And now it's all YouTube, and which is great. Um, I think it's a great place to get your chops and learn how to make film. So I think, uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I answered your question. Uh, no, that, and uh, you did, absolutely. What about turning points in your career? Have there been some that really, now that you look back, were, were huge for you? Hmm. I, um, I'm, I'm going to say somewhere around the mid-'80s when uh, mu- music video was um, uh, doing... Uh, well, much was on its way. It was sort of a, the the new big thing, as you said. You know, sunglasses at night, all those kind of hits and whatnot. Um, I uh, I saw the advertising industry became interested in where are all the eyeballs going. So um, I ended up uh, working in um, advertising, making commercials for a while. So it was kind of interesting going into a different discipline, coming from uh, from music video. Um, I think uh, uh, I think we saw the feature film industry start to pay attention to uh, music video as well, just in terms of the the directors and the people that were making them. I know that they made forays into the uh, industry in the '80s and whatnot. So it had a lot of different influences, broke a lot of rules, and now it's old. <laughs> oh, it's old. Oh, yeah, it's old, but it's uh, but it's something that people still really pay attention to. Yeah. 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 We're talking to Rob Courtley here on Northumberland 89.7. You're listening to the Jan Sprague Show. What about commercials? What did that do? I mean, over 400 commercials. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, the, 
discipline of making a commercial into 30 seconds that has some kind of a message um, is entertaining um, is uh, is a challenge um, and um, I, I, I I love the challenge I, uh, I for a while I was doing a lot of music based commercials um, I did something for the uh, Dairy Bureau called Wrapping Dairy Farmers. I don't know if you ever saw that. I did. I watched that preparing and uh, fantastic. I do remember that commercial. Um, so um, that was, you know, in, in my uh, ballywick there to, to work with music. But um, um, uh, working in you know, comedy, working with kids, working with uh, different uh, styles of communication, to me it's always been a question of trying to give the viewer something for giving the time to watch something. But doing it to 30 seconds or 720 film frames, to be exact, is, um, is a, a challenge. A it's challenge. a different kind of arc. What typically goes in? What kind of time? Man hours? I can't even imagine yeah, to well, one commercial. Well, there's a lot of people involved. I mean, there's the, the brand, then there's the advertising agency, and uh, the creative within the advertising agency, and then production and uh, distribution. It's, there's a big, big, long uh, line of people involved. Yeah, yeah, a lot of time and energy. How did you end up getting into doing film shorts? You know, um, I think maybe because I loved the pricey of commercials, the short form, um, and, and making making a, a long film takes so much time, so much effort, so much money, and the the short in, in and out, and 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 it can um, be phenomenally rewarding. I think uh, the, the interesting is everywhere site that I've started is all about uh, really celebrating stories of uh, of people, and uh, short form is, I think, the name of the media today. Lots of things are short form. Mm -hmm. How do you? Why is it that you do you see something that we de we don't when you when you look behind? Uh, it's a different perspective. You're you're behind the camera. So how how do you see that that need for uh, short for the short attention span? How do you see that? How did you did you watch that develop in a different way than we might have? Oh, I don't know. Um, I uh, uh, I think it sort of runs tandem. I've always been a, an early adopter of uh, technology, and there's so much amazing technology now. There's so much ways of sharing the, um, the content that's created. There's so much content out there. I think uh, <laughs> you're not in your head. Oh, yes. I, mean, I mean, look at podcasts now are going crazy. Uh, uh, fantastic. There's so many different types of, uh, of content. So, um. I don't know, short form uh, uh, works for me. Mm -hmm. And that need to tell a story, I know that's an important element to you. Do you see that changing as far as feature films are concerned, shorts? Do you see, uh, do you see something, uh, you know, obviously you, you bring a very much of a, a visionary sort of aspect to your work. And uh, obviously you always, you always have uh, sort of been on the leading edge. Um, so, you know, how about that storytelling? How do you, where do you see that going? Yeah, um, I think uh, you know, lots of people talk about story being, uh, I don't know, how many are there, 10 stories that get retold in different ways. I, I don't know, but story to me is how we communicate, how we share, how we learn, how we uh, laugh. And uh, uh, there's so many different reasons why um, telling a good story um, uh, is something for us all. I think it's... Uh, a human thing to communicate good stories. I mean, in a way, isn't that what we're kind of doing here today in the radio? Isn't that what you do? Don't mm -hmm. you draw out the story for some, from somebody and, and uh, try to pick out the interesting bits that people want to listen to and to share? I mm -hmm. mean, I think that's what storytelling is all about. Yeah, so whether it's a feature film, a short, whatever it is, it's that element of... Sharing. Uh, sharing. I think so. I think so. And if you can share in a way that makes a difference, then, um, giving you the segue over to imagining, uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, if, if, if you can share in a way that makes a difference to um, anybody, um, and, and if I can jump into what we were talking about before, uh, before the interview started, we were talking about the uh, short film that I made last year for uh, Imaginate about Victoria, who's a very, very special lady. Um, and um, has 
oh my god she's just uh, such a uh, has such a beautiful soul and um, her story of struggle from uh, addiction and abuse and 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 then then the story gets positive and and she's she's sort of figured it out to the point where uh my goodness she's strong you know and 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 she's she's got all these fabulous things to say little life lessons but her biggest wish is that if just one person out there could learn from her that they wouldn't make the mistakes that she made so that story i mean from from trials to tribulation and and uh, and share a message that'll make a difference. Mm-hmm. I think that's special. That's what I like. Just in a couple of minutes. It's a, it's beautifully done, and I, I urge people to go to uh, interestingiseverywhere.com to to check out that video, as well as, as uh, numerous other ones, which mm-hmm. are, are beautiful, beautiful uh, stories that uh, really capture the imagination, the heart, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and there is a lot to be drawn from. Like you said, that word share, sharing, mm-hmm. yeah, beautiful. That's a, a great word to, uh, to put forth. It is. Mm-hmm. And, and how did you get involved in Greenwood Coalition? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know if I remember exactly where uh, it started, but I went to, I don't know how I was introduced. I was certainly introduced to David Sheffield, who you've interviewed, and who is a, a fantastically caring, sharing, uh, community-minded person. Um, I think it was one of their dinners. I went to one of their dinners. And uh, uh, they have a, 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 a phrase that uh, I think is... Uh, it's hard to sum up what they do, but they, they use the phrase radically inclusive. And um, I think that takes people from all walks of life. There are people there that have you know, addiction issues, uh, uh, poverty, homeless, uh, mental illness. And all of, all of those people sit and they break bread together with other people who are just part of the same community. And um, I was hooked. It's just such a... I mean, breaking bread with somebody is a very uh, nice thing to do and kind of levels everything in a nice way. Sounds, yeah. So and share some time. Very, and a lot of presence, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And a lot of presence and obviously something that you've always brought to your work and uh, uh, and to be able, and it sounds like a lot of presence uh, at, at this dinner. It's beautiful. Yeah, mm-hmm. David and his team of volunteers certainly do a lot of beautiful work here. In Northumberland, they do. We have the pleasure today of talking with Rob Courtley. And when we come back from this commercial break, we're going to chat a little bit more about the life and work of Rob, as well as the Greenwood Coalition. They have a wonderful event coming up next Saturday night, Imaginate, on February 14th. I urge you to go to their website and uh, and get tickets for this event. It takes place in Port Hope, and there are going to be a number of incredible people speaking. It's like a, a TED Talk kind of thing, and, uh, and a wonderful film that I have a, had a, the opportunity of a sneak peek called A Love Story of Rob's, and that will be uh, screened uh, next Saturday night, February 14th. So do get tickets. Uh, that's Greenwood Coalition. You can Google them and Port Hope and you'll be able to uh, to buy your tickets. They're going fast, I understand, so make sure you get them. We'll be back with Rob in a minute here on Northumberland 89.7. Please stay tuned. Head to the Royal Canadian Legion this month to catch these great events. On Saturday the 14th, there'll be an open dance in the auditorium for Valentine's Day with live music by Cowboys Don't Cry. On Sunday the 15th, come and celebrate the 50th birthday of Candace Flagg in the downstairs club room. Entertainment by Bill Dickinson starting at 1 p.m. And on the 17th, Tuesday, it's Ladies' Night starting at 7 p.m., a cost of $6. The Royal Canadian Legion is at 136 Orr Street in Coburg. Call 905-372-2231 and become a member today. The story you are about to hear is true. Ed White fixed my refrigerator. And? He did a great job. Now I don't need to buy a new fridge. And if I don't get a new fridge, then I won't need a whole new kitchen to go with it. So my guy is saying Ed White saved him $20,000. Guys, save twenty grand. Call Ed White Appliance Service in Port Hope at 905-885-7109. Yes, it is worth fixing. Hometown Bingo is your community connection for fun and excitement seven days a week. This month at Hometown Bingo. Monday at 7 p.m. Bingo, three strip books are only $5. 
Tuesday is back to basic bingo. No verifiers will be played, and we will be playing the accumulator, player's progressive, mini progressive, and the toonie pot. At the Wednesday 7 p.m. bingo, you can purchase a $60 verifier and receive a free five-strip book, a $20 savings. Thursday at 7 p.m., the paper price is only $2 per strip. Hometown Bingo and Culver, 884 Division Street, just south of Elgin, on the east side. And check out their website, hometownbingo.ca. Jim McGrath understands that as much as we don't want to talk about it, wills and estate planning is a responsible thing to do for you and your family. With his help, you can reflect on your values and wishes and have a legal direction to let others know what kind of health and personal care you would want if you could not speak for yourself. Jim McGrath has been a lawyer for over 30 years and he understands the law so you don't have to. You owe it to yourself and your loved ones to call Jim McGrath today at 905-373-1999. Hi, I'm David Hayes of Cedar Rail, and on behalf of my partner, Wendy Bellin, we just want to tell you about our new show, It's All About the Music, which airs Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Northumberland 89.7. The show features local entertainment as well as great musicians from the past, such as Patsy Cline and Merle Hager. Hope you can tune in, Northumberland 89.7, Wednesday night at 7. Hi, Northumberland. I'm Jan Sprague, and you're listening to Northumberland 89.7. I have the absolute pleasure today of having Rob Courtley in our studios. Rob is a director, producer, and uh, has been, in through the last decades, a really uh, a shaping force, a visionary in Canadian directing and producing. Uh, you know, back in, if you went to my, my uh my Facebook page this morning, I, I had to post Sunglasses at Night by Corey Hart. And Rob won the first ever Juno for music video for that video. And boy, it was fun to see that little smirky face on Corey Hart and, uh, and really just, that little pout. It was such a pout yeah. leaning against that wall. And I remember that video wow. so well. So I can, I can tell you a funny thing about that video. It actually was shot in the Old Don Jail over on Gerard Street, um, uh, which is, I don't know, um, 1850s or whenever it was built. And I mean, they have serpents inside, uh, you know, to repent while you're in, in jail there. But the thing uh, is, uh, while we were filming it, it obviously wasn't a jail at that point. Um, uh, the Humane Society was looking for a new place to put uh, their animals, and they turned it down because the large animals couldn't turn around in the cells in there. So we filmed and it was a night shoot overnight and I can tell you it was a spooky experience being in there overnight. But anyway. I can worse. imagine. But uh, Is there anything that hit the cutting room floor that you now look back and go ah. Oh. The um, uh, just about that video um, there's a few sequences where he's singing in slow motion. So he's singing, uh, but his lips are in sync with the audio, which is running real time, and yet he's in slow motion. So he, um, and the way you do that is you film twice as slow, and you play the music back f for him twice as fast. So if you play sunglasses at night twice as fast, his voice goes up, and he's trying to lip sync to that. It's really tough to do. Um, he got it. So there are a few of those pieces that ended up on the uh, editing room floor, but the effect is kind of neat, seeing someone in slow motion actually syncing up with uh, with their audio. So. I could imagine. Yeah. Well, you, you must see things in, a, in an interesting way just in your everyday life. Yeah. I uh, I think I drive my family crazy sometimes with, uh, you know, here, look at that. That's neat. Well, what is it you see, Dad? And I don't know. I'm just always wandering around with my brain looking at uh, mm. things, people in particular. I love people. Something mm. about... Uh, people watching. I think the sport of people watching is much underrated. Mm. It's fun. I love people. And the word real is important to you in that regard. Yeah, thank you. Um, um, capturing people uh, as they are uh, the, and celebrating who they are, um, uh, showing people in a dignified way um, is very important to me. I think that uh, um, Capturing as opposed to forcing. I, uh, there are a lot of uh, filmmakers who force a certain tone or attitude, and it always feels uh, uh, false to me. I like uh, I, I like capturing the shiny the shiny parts of uh, people's personalities. 
Mm -hmm. We do that beautifully in Interesting is Everywhere, interestingiseverywhere.com. And I urge you uh, to to take a look at some of these film shorts because they are spectacular. I did post one about a wonderful man, uh, uh, drummer, who, uh, yeah. <laughs> boy, lots of energy. Uh, and uh, a beautiful way of uh, capturing, when you capture the different stills, can you describe that for us? When you, tr you yeah. beautiful, when you, when you captured uh, his girlfriend or his partner, Mm. response to yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, filmmaking to me is about juxtaposition it's about a scene next to a scene and when when you think about editing the way that your mind flows with the editing influences the way you interpret what you're watching so if you were to see um, for any film buffs out there the Eisenstein kind of yeah. early 20s filmmaking where the, if the, if uh, experimented with the idea of if you show a a man and then you show a woman and then you show a child, it's very different than showing a woman and then showing a child and then showing a man. The way you interpret their relationship is very different. So intrinsically in all film, juxtaposition is critical for how you tell the story and how you uh, uh, lead people through the uh, the information. In the piece you're talking about, I was playing with juxtaposition by breaking the frame itself down. So Ben, who is desperately in love with Denis, um, is on one side of the frame, and she is times four on the other side of the frame, reacting in different ways as he speaks. So it's sort of an exploration of juxtaposition of people interacting with each other. That's beautiful, I guess. You know, as, as, as you're asking me, and, and being so nice to me, I have to say, there are a lot of people involved in making a f film. I, I said uh, earlier, it's not a, it's not a uh, uh, one man's person. It is a team sport, and and the and the people that uh, uh, that I work with are uh, very uh, talented and special. And uh, um, the piece that we're uh, about to talk about from uh, Imaginate, um, I just wanted to for. Uh, you asked me any more about it to give a shout out to uh, a couple of the people. Uh, there's a, a lovely lady named Cassie Jeans who is a very talented uh, uh, photographer in Port Hope, and uh, she uh, was part of the film team along with uh, uh, some people from the Seguino studio, uh, Mike Haley, and an incredible editor. And I actually could do a whole show with you about editing. The people who edit film, oh my God, they are something else. Well, we'll have to do that. <laughs> okay. We'll bring some of your team in. Yeah. It sounds like fun. Sure. What about uh, how, how, before we do talk about a love story, how have these shorts changed you? I can't help but think there's... You know, um, it's a, I, I think I'm at a, 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 an, an interesting point because I, I started doing the project, I think, about a year and a half ago. Um, and I really wanted to make film with no reason for it wasn't going to promote a... Uh, band, it wasn't going to promote a brand. Um, they were just going to be standalone little pieces for their own sake, and and I, and I didn't absolutely no promotion as well. I just literally just put them up on the site. There's just a, a holding place, and um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm starting to revisit what that means because, uh, um, for instance, I did a piece on uh, uh, a friend who has a a beautiful little girl named uh, Alma who has a syndrome called Will Williams Syndrome. I, I'd never heard of Williams Syndrome before, but um, Alma is a beautiful, like she must be about two now, a uh, little girl, and uh, part of the syndrome is uh, this incredible smile, great big beautiful eyes, an incredible smile. I mean, she'd walk away with anybody, so trusting, uh, very, very musical. They think that Elves and uh, fairies, leprechauns, were actually people with Williams Syndrome a long time ago. So I thought that was an interesting story to tell. I mean, it's not all sweet. The syndrome has a lot of challenges, too, from a disability point of view. So I'm wondering. I can't even remember what your question is. Why? Oh, well, yeah. So why did I do th uh, Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I, did, I, did, I, I did this piece just because... She's such a lovely lady, and her daughter is so uh, beautiful and nice, and it, was an, it seemed to me to be an interesting thing to talk about. Um, and all of a sudden, there are all these hits going on on the website, and people picking up and sharing it and whatnot. And I was like, wow, you know, that's neat. So 
the idea uh, uh, to, to bring the word back again of, of, of sharing is uh, kind of interesting. I'm not, not sure where it's going, but we'll see. But it, it is, and there's a beautiful moment at the end of that uh, film. Uh, just that moment of the sparkle and the smile. It's like, it's like she becomes bigger than even the screen. It's, yeah, yeah. it's really spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it, it is. It's that sharing. It's that sharing. Uh, it's it's like radio. It's film. It's it's the sharing. Uh, it's that's important. It's sharing with people. Sharing with uh, sharing what you love with people. What you think is important. Or mm. yeah, it becomes a tool through which, for me, the lens. For you, the microphone to explore uh, your own interests and whatnot as well. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Why did you get into uh, radio? What was it about radio that it intrigued me as a, a connect. I love connecting. I love connecting with people. And so I think I came into it wanting to connect with people. And then it became uh, all about the word vulnerability. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of vulnerability getting behind the microphone and just becoming, you know, a, a little by little, I think I've more and more just uh, who I am now. You know, not thinking about what I'm saying and not thinking about the, the listener other than wanting to be a conduit for someone spectacular like you and, and be able to, you know, be able to convey that, which is important in the world and, and connect the listener with, uh, with something important and interesting and vital that might help change them in some way, perhaps. Oh, beautiful things. Interesting that there's risk isn't it? Yeah, I, that, that you have to take a risk. When I, again, I'm going to turn it back, but this uh, Victoria piece and, and the, the piece that's going to be played at uh, Imaginate next weekend, um, these people, my goodness, they just put it out and I just think they're so special for doing that, for, for taking the risk to tell their story, personal story. So it's a privilege for us through our tools to be able to do that and, and take the risks ourselves but you know is everyone going to hate my film <laughs> is everyone going to hate that well so and far? privilege is a great word and i think it's it's a privilege uh i i really one of the things that that watching interesting is everywhere that did for me is i thought if if that was me and and i was to you know film myself with an interesting is everywhere short could I put myself out there as much as these very special people have and, and the gift that they are giving those people who are watching? Yeah. It's, a, it's a very vulnerable, beautiful thing that they're doing. I think um, I, I just imagine that it must be cathartic as well um, I th to uh, tell your, uh, it, let your inner self out and actually then you know, believe in it. A That's lot right. of trust. It's a risk. There's a lot of trust uh, and uh, and risk, but I, I, a lot of people will have and uh, the actual honor of of watching a love story next Saturday night, this this coming Saturday evening at Imaginate Greenwood Coalition's uh, Imaginate's the second annual. I urge people to go out and get tickets. Uh, well, you actually probably don't even need to go out your door to get tickets, but uh, but do get a tickets to Imaginate. There are a number of wonderful speakers uh, that uh, um, you'll have an opportunity to hear. It's kind of like a TED Talk kind of thing. So uh, get your tickets for that. And uh, but why Bill and Jeanette? A love story. What what led you to to wanting to? Um, I was around uh, at the. Big, it, when they decided the dates for this. So it was going to be on uh, Valentine's Day. And um, last year, uh, um, I was unable to be there because I, I wasn't in the country. So I, uh, I, David wanted me to get on stage and, and, and talk, which I like. Well, compared to the other people that are going, I said, no, David, you know, I, I don't really know what I have to contribute, but why don't I make a little film for you? Um, and so that was the Victoria piece. Then this year, uh, it, when it ended up that it was going to be on uh, Valentine's Day, it just seemed logical to do something about love. And I think that's the, uh, the, 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 the line is all you need is love, which is such a beautiful line. So that was the concept for the film. And uh, um, David introduced me to Bill and Jeanette, who live here in Coburg. And um, uh, the film is uh, their love story, and, and and not to give it all away, but other, basically, uh, their love uh, 
it chokes me up to think about it. Uh, they conquered everything with their love. Yeah, yeah it a, certainly has uh, had a much larger effect than uh, just the two of them. And, and will again after it's been released uh, further. But just you can imagine the power of that uh, to those people around them. You could feel it. Totally. The uh, thing, um, this is sort of maybe a bit of a tangent, maybe not, but uh, point of view um, from uh, the filmmaker uh, is at them. They actually look into the camera and they're talking to the viewer with everything. And that's, a, 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 I think, an important point because it makes it inclusive. The camera is not observing them. They know the camera is there and they are very much um, sharing together with the viewer their story. So, What other words other than love or phrases come to mind when you had the pleasure of working with Phil and Jeanette? Mm. Good. Um, wow. Uh, respect um, to uh, to be able to share something that's been difficult um, with strength, uh, becoming stronger themselves, and then sharing that to give to other people. Uh, respect's a pretty big one. Uh, the uh, Tough, I know. Uh, there's all walks of life around us, and uh, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people uh, here who are, you know, homeless. And uh, uh, Bill and Jeanette aren't homeless, but there are, are, are so many people around us from uh, so many different walks of uh, of life that uh, uh, I'm wandering again. They need their stories told. I think about. I think we should make a film about everybody. We'll start. With I you. think you're. I think you're right. I think it's true. Everyone's got that story. Don't they? They really do. Are there misconceptions? That, I mean, obviously, there's lots of misconceptions. What do you think are some of the biggest ones after spending time with, with Greenwood, the volunteers, the, the people? I just, uh, you know, every, uh, everyone that I've met there um, has something to say. They have an opinion. They have uh, 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 a point of view. And uh, I think it's a misperception that... Uh, uh, that some of the people that may, you know, have some challenges going on, that they don't have a point of view, and that they their point of view might be right. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's neat. That's neat, and that's where you come in, being <laughs> able to convey that to people, which is nice. nice. It's really, really nice. We have the pleasure today of, of speaking with Rob Courtley. Uh, Rob is a well-known Canadian ca uh, producer and director and certainly has shaped a film here in Canada and abroad through the last number of decades. After this commercial break, we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about uh, Rob, his work, and the Greenwood Coalition's Imaginate. Uh, go to greenwoodcoalition.com. That's greenwoodcoalition.com to get your tickets. They are selling fast. That's February 14th in the evening at Trinity School in Port Hope. And uh, certainly the lineup of people who... We, we'll have to talk about sure. that, Rob, because sure. the people who are going to be presenting at this, uh, is, it's quite astounding. And uh, I urge you, like I say, to go to Greenwood's website and, and take a look uh, at, uh, at what will be available to you in these TED Talks, it, greenwoodcoalition.com. It, it'll be a lovely evening. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And isn't that one of the things that Greenwood's urging? All you need is love and, isn't it? Some, yeah, something to think about before the evening. What, what else do you need? And eh, It's one of those things that's answered in a lot of interesting is everywhere film shorts. Uh, what else you do need but love? And uh, interesting is, and is everywhere dot com is where you're going to be able to see some of Rob's recent work as well as at Imaginate on February 14th. So we'll go to some commercial breaks here on Northumberland 89.7. I'm Jan Sprague and we'll be right back with Rob Courtley. <laughs> The story you are about to hear is true. Ed White fixed my refrigerator. And? He did a great job. Now I don't need to buy a new fridge. And if I don't get a new fridge, then I won't need a whole new kitchen to go with it. So my guy is saying Ed White saved him $20,000. Guys, save twenty grand. Call Ed White Appliance Service in Port Hope at 905-885-7109. Yes. It is worth fixing. Hometown Bingo is your community connection for fun and excitement seven days a week. 
This month at Hometown Bingo. Monday at 7 p.m. Bingo, three strip books are only $5. Tuesday is Back to Basic Bingo. No verifiers will be played, and we will be playing the Accumulator, Players Progressive, Mini Progressive, and the Toonie Pot. At the Wednesday 7 p.m. bingo, you can purchase a $60 verifier and receive a free five-strip book at $20 savings. Thursday at 7 p.m., the paper price is only $2 per strip. Hometown Bingo in Colbert, 884 Division Street, just south of Elgin on the east side. And check out their website, hometownbingo.ca. Jim McGrath understands that as much as we don't want to talk about it, wills and estate planning is a responsible thing to do for you and your family. With his help, you can reflect on your values and wishes and have a legal direction to let others know what kind of health and personal care you would want if you could not speak for yourself. Jim McGrath has been a lawyer for over 30 years and he understands the law so you don't have to. You owe it to yourself and your loved ones to call Jim McGrath today at 905-373-1999. Hi, I'm David Hayes of Cedar Rail, and on behalf of my partner, Wendy Bellin, we just want to tell you about our new show, It's All About the Music, which airs Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Northumberland 89.7. The show features local entertainment as well as great musicians from the past, such as Patsy Cline and Merle Haggard. Hope you can tune in, Northumberland 89.7, Wednesday night at 7. We've gone and done it again. You agree to plan your company's dinner party. Where will you hold it this year? Of course, there's nowhere better to hold large events than at the Legion Hall in Colbert. Hold your receptions and private parties at the Legion Hall, and you can get them catered. Call Shelley at 905-372-6554 and book the Legion for your event today. And call Sue at 905-342-2087 for catering. The Royal Canadian Legion Branch 133 is located at 136 Orr Street in Coburg. Call 905 372 2231 and become a member today. Hi, Northumberland. I'm Jan Sprague, and you're listening to the Jan Sprague Show here on Northumberland 89.7. Today, we have the pleasure of Rob Courtley joining us in our studios here at uh, 1000 uh, Elgin Street in Coburg. So you drop by sometime. We're, we're here uh, pretty well 24 hours a day. So drop by and, um, and uh, you know, we are always looking for volunteers here, too. And, and they're always looking for volunteers at GreenwoodCoalition.com is where you're going to find them. Greenwood does some terrific work in Northumberland uh, with those, um, you know, those people who, how how did you phrase that, Rob? Because I thought that was beautiful, how you phrased. Radically uh, inclusive. inclusive. They're radically inclusive. So it's, and it is, it's about those with mental illness, uh, perhaps addictions, um, those maybe living below the poverty line, one might say, homeless. And so, yeah, that's a beautiful, I like that phrase. And and, and, uh, I I guess one of the phrases that I've heard David Sheffield use is is walking with them. Mm. And I think that word inclusive is a really critical part of it all. It certainly uh, seems a a, a strong way of building community. It's not us and them. We're all together. Yeah, like the dinner that you were telling us about, which is you know, everyone breaking bread together. That's right. And, uh, and that's how, and I think they do a, a pie off or something. Yes, I just, haven't been a part of that, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's a great idea, sure. Yeah. It is a great yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah. And then this night, which is really going to feature a variety of people, imaginate next uh, to Friday, uh, it's Saturday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Exactly. And, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's 7 p.m. Um, but. Uh, the way you refer to it is how I understand it, kind of a TED Talk style with a real variety of people. I mean, I certainly feel uh, honored to uh, be a part of it. The the uh, There's music um, and there's dance. Um, there's comedy and there's great food. If anyone's <laughs> been to the social, I'm happy to say that. Live on radio, that's a great restaurant over in Port Hope. And, and if I say Port Hope and, and then I say Coburg. Is that okay? It's fine because here at Northumberland 89.7, we like to we like to capture the whole of Northumberland. So we we, we bridge those gaps. You Without see. any problem at all, right? No. Even though I know you're a traitor, you apparently oh, were from Port Hope, right? I, yes, I grew up in Port Hope. I, I live in Coburg now. And I have to say, I, I do love all of Northumberland. I think it, all areas have something to offer with that beautifully dif- diplomatic answer. It was perfect. It was perfect. <laughs> 
um, but all, all all of these people have something to offer. I think on on uh, Saturday night. So uh, music. There's a, a, a neat. Uh, I'm just looking at the list here. There's a, a Native Canadian couple, Waba, and I'm particularly looking forward to uh, listening to. I think I think they get ten minutes each. So. Um, I think that's neat. I think the whole evening is so got so much variety; it'll just wash over you. And uh, Deborah Kimmett, if anyone's heard her before, um, she's uh, on that great show, The Debaters, occasionally with Steve Patterson, who is hilarious on and off uh, the radio. Um, so, yeah, I think there's some really uh, really neat people. Noah Richler. Noah Richler. That's right. Yeah, it really, it is. It is a, an incredible lineup, and like you say, it'll wash over you because with all these little shorts, it's a, it's a beautiful way of uh, bringing uh, such an array of, like you say, a variety of things together. A, a whole, a, an experience, a whole body experience. Food, music, the whole bit. That's right. The Good whole stuff. bit. Yeah, and, and and a wonderful film, a love story. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're looking forward to. Is that sort of that's? Uh, is this the first time it will be shown publicly? Yes, so, yeah, this is a, a premiere. Yes. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, after uh, after that, then uh, if uh, people like it, then uh, maybe they can share it. Mm. That would is, be nice. is there a little bit? Like, you've been doing this for a long time, but is there that little moment when they start the reel? The uh, first time? Uh, every time. Uh, and do they notice that little part that's slightly out of focus in that one scene there or the little sound thing? Yes, it's easy to get very close to it. But um, uh, it's exciting, too. I think uh, I, I, when you're making a film, there's no audience. You know, you're uh, uh, dreaming about how you're going to edit it and how you're going to put it together. So the idea of uh, an audience... Seeing how an audience reacts to your work is uh, uh, very, very uh, exciting and fun. Yeah, yeah and po that must be very powerful because you, you probably typically don't get a chance to actually watch people respond to your work. No, no, no. no. I, um, I mean, certainly I've you know, done uh, television and whatnot. The, they were looking at their own boxes. Everyone's looking at their own box, right? So the the theater experience, and I have. Uh, well, that, we were talking earlier about the uh, dairy farmers, the wrapping dairy farmers. <laughs> that that was their main source of distribution was uh, uh, theatrical. Um, it was certainly on TV as well. But uh, so seeing that in the uh, uh, in the audience and seeing people enjoy it, yeah, makes you feel good. Makes sure. you feel good, and yeah. Yeah, 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 because you just you, you you never know. Even after these years and uh, your illustrious career, you don't, you never know. You never know. <laughs> I I uh, um, uh, we were talking earlier, and stop me if we're repeating something about uh, the tool of, of of communicating. I think everyone is looking for a tool through which to do things, and that's certainly. Uh, I went to uh, I went to school to go into uh, medicine. Actually, I went to Queens, just down the road, um, and. Uh, had the visions of having an MD, and um, some friends uh, were in the film department at Queen's and said that they were going down to uh, uh, the opening of the Grand Prix track in Montreal, and um, did I want to go? I knew something about sound. Would you come, Rob? Maybe you'd do some sound. We'd make up some freight, fake press passes and see what we could do, and, and lo and behold, we ended up in there, and uh, we interviewed uh, Nikki Lada and... Uh, James Hunt, and uh, and uh, uh, came back from that experience going, wow, if I know something about how to make film, then maybe I can get a front row seat. And uh, <laughs> and that's uh, uh, how it became the tool. Mm. So after all of that, so there you are, you know, the, in all the years of um, your work, what's really important to you now? Mm. Wow, I I, uh, huh. I like films where you're really not aware of the filmmaker, so it's really more about the people or the story than it is about technique and isn't that cool. So it's important to me now that the craft that of making film is is uh, there's a phrase called suspension of disbelief. I don't know if you've heard it uh, before, but it's basically that you. Uh, forget that you're watching the film. You suspend your disbelief, and uh, I, I think that that that's a, a neat place to be. 
that's certainly what I'm trying to do. That is a neat place to be. What's next for Rob Courtley? Ah, oh, I don't want to jinx any of the projects by talking about them because they're not funded yet. But uh, I am um, pursuing uh, a variety of projects um, that will be, uh, web will be the first tier, uh, video web, um, transmedia projects, all people oriented, kind of putting interesting is everywhere on steroids. Mm. Mm. Mm, we'll look forward to that. That's great. Yeah. What, and uh, at the right time, let us know. We'd love to have you back in the studio to talk about more of your work and these projects as they come into being. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this amazing journey with us. And uh, we'll very much look forward to seeing a love story on Saturday night, February 14th. That's Valentine's Day. And you can get tickets to Greenwood Coalition's Imaginate 2015 at greenwoodcoalition.com. And I urge you to get your tickets the sooner the better because they are selling uh, quickly. And uh, just because of the uh, incredible lineup of people. That's a TED Talk kind of event. And um, the lineup is incredible. It's sure to be a, a very, very special evening. Uh, and you'll be sharing it with some very special people. And uh, Greenwood does some amazing things in our community. And the proceeds will go to their work. It is a fundraiser. And I urge you to get out and uh, support something that's essential here in Northumberland. And uh, we like here at Northumberland 89.7, we like to spread the word about what people are doing in North. Thumberland. So thank you again, Rob, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, a love story next Saturday night. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening today. Greenwood Coalition presents Imaginate 2015, an evening of possibility on Saturday, February 14th at 730. That takes place at Trinity College School in Port Hope, Ontario. The event's theme, as suggested by its Valentine's Day timing, is all you need is love and... So I don't know what that dot dot is for you, but all you need uh, is love and. This second annual event hosted by nationally acclaimed writer and humorist Deborah Kimmett will feature short TED style presentations by compelling speakers and performing artists, as well as a visual arts exhibit. Local, locally sourced food and drink is catered by the social bar and table, and it will be offered at the reception, which is a part of your ticket price. Organizers of Imaginate 2015 hope to stimulate positive thought and action around the various challenges we face as a society and to propose some possible community-based solutions to these issues. Proceeds from the evening will benefit the work of Greenwood Coalition, a street-level charitable organization that uses a community model of caring to walk alongside people living with poverty, mental illness, addiction and disability in Port Hope, Ontario. In addition to outstanding speakers such as broadcaster Noah Richler and cons conservationist Carmen Lishman, Imaginate 2015 will include the premiere of both a contemporary dance performance and, of course, the short film by award-winning filmmaker Rob Courtley. Tickets for Imaginate 2015 are available at Trinity College School, as well as GreenwoodCoalition.com, and at the Ganaraska Art and Framing in Port Hope. In addition to attending the event, I would urge you to listen to a great podcast by... Uh, it, it features David Sheffield, who is uh, integral to the Greenwood Coalition, and that's an interview with Jim Glover, our very own Jim Glover here at Northumberland 89.7. You can find that podcast on our website, northumberland897.ca. I look forward to seeing you Saturday night, and thanks for listening today. Here at Northumberland 89.7, I'm Jan Sprague.